Welcome everyone. My name is Josie Rosen with Dan and Debbie's Creamery. And today we're gonna to talk about growing your farm business with convenience. Before we dive into how we expanded our business, I'd like to share a little bit more about myself. I'm the Director of Operations at Dan and Debbie's Creamery. I work with my brothers, Dustin, Tyler, Riley, and my sister, Tori, and we own and operate Dan and Debbie's Creamery along with our dairy farm. We're a small farm-to-table dairy processing facility in Ely, Iowa, just in between Iowa City and Cedar Rapids in the heart of the Midwest. About five years ago, we started taking milk from our family farm and turning it into high quality dairy products like milk, cheese, ice cream, and butter. My parents are first generation dairy farmers who have been milking cows for nearly 25 years. They actually started farming way back in the 80s with beef cows and sheep. They did some row crop and a number of other livestock production. They wanted to make a go at farming and they were bound and determined to do whatever they could to keep in the farming industry. It wasn't until 1997 when they transitioned from beef to dairy cows. And that didn't just happen overnight. There was a lot of thought and research that went into the process. And a story that I like to share that I think is something that can be passed on to others is my parents' determination to be in the farming industry. My parents went to seven different financial institutions to try to get their go in the dairy industry. They needed funding to build their milking parlor and freestall barn. And after going to six different financial institutions, they were told no time after time. I think it was their determination that they passed down onto my brothers and sisters and I that you don't ever give up because after that seventh bank, they said yes. And today we would have never started the creamery without all of that determination, perseverance, and I guess you could say drive to not give up. So it was only a decade into dairy farming when my parents decided that they didn't like the market prices of milk and they wanted to take more control over their success and their ability to become more sustainable. And so they started researching on farm dairy processing facilities. And we toured a number of different dairy processing facilities that sold from their farm to people's tables. And after seeing a few, I knew my dad, this was something that he was going to make happen no matter what. And so it took us about 10 years of research, trying to pencil it on paper and make it work. So my parents had been milking for nearly 20 years before we even opened the doors to the creamery. And in 2016, I remember making our very first vat of cheese. Um, we started making some basic ice cream flavors and we opened our doors to the public. Now, it wasn't until just last year where we really started to leverage convenience to grow our operation through our home delivery service, which has been a great success. I mentioned earlier that a lot of thought and planning went into everything that we did thus far. So over the last 25 years, my parents really tried to take a look at what they were doing and wanted to make some decisions that were going to be really really smart, even if they weren't the easiest, to create a sustainable farm for future generations. Now, it's been very important for our entire family to be committed to sustainability and to our community. And so our goals is really to just create and add to the vibrancy of our community have a really unique offering, something that you don't see other places where people can just really feel like they're involved in our operations. So we want all of the people that walk in our doors, we want everybody that we deliver to, to feel like they have a little part in what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve. The other part of our business is that we are a family operation. We all have worked really, really hard, but my parents truly have laid down the foundation of such an amazing farm. And now it's really up to my brothers and myself and my sister to, to move it forward and take it to the next level and really create a sustainable way of farming that will continue to live on for generations to come. So throughout all of the generations that have been involved thus far with my parents, myself, and 
out witnessing my young kids being able to be involved. I think the one thing that stands true and remains a priority is our dedication to providing really fresh, high quality, wholesome products to our community. One of the things that makes us unique is just our ability to create and share content that really creates a loyal customer. So we have a quality product. We know that we put a lot of time and energy into creating a quality product, but how how do we convey that to our consumers? It's really important that to drive buyer loyalty, we share the why about our products. Why do we do this with our product? Why do we think our product is better? If you can answer that, then you can really set yourself apart from others. The uniqueness about selling direct to buyers or direct to consumers is that you have the ability to communicate with them. And so for me, me and for our business, we try to lay out some different highlighted points that we want to try to convey in all of our tactics, whether it's when people come into our store to buy stuff, when we're delivering products to people, or when we're just communicating with them via our social media channels and newsletters. So some of those key points that we share with our consumers and our customers is just that they're getting an all natural premium ingredient. It sounds easy to say, but again, I go back to the why. Why is our product all natural? Why is it premium? What makes it that way? It's a single source, but what does that really mean? How do we educate our consumers and our customers and let them know about that quality? If you can hook them and if they feel like they're understanding exactly what it is that you're trying to offer, loyalty comes on its own. Again, if you can sit down, think about your farm, write down those different things that you feel set you apart and why your product or offering is quality and different than the person down the street, then you're going to have great success in your business. Sometimes the hardest step in having a business where you sell direct to consumers is taking the leap of faith that it takes to start that business. And it was no easy decision for us and for our family to say, hey, we want to start a creamery and sell our own products. It took years of, of researching, but the hardest piece of that puzzle was just doing it, getting started, taking the step in that direction. We spent years researching small farmstead dairy processing facilities, and we continue to research and, and learn from others. Um, we've built contacts in our industry, almost like a peer group where you can learn from others because we're all in this together. Being able to lean on one, one another and ask questions is so important and we can learn so much from each other. So just researching and building uh, relationships with one another is very, very Im important. Now that research and figuring out what others are doing has really led to us selling our products in the first place. So in 2016, when we sold our first bag of cheese curd, our first ice cream cone, all of those decision-making moments in the, the planning process was worth it because we were able to hear from consumers that they love our product. And there's nothing more rewarding than putting all of this time and energy and effort into a product and having people love it. And so that was really, really exciting. And I think having that relationship with the customer has also allowed us to expand and grow our products in the future. We have the ability to communicate with our market and those individuals, the families, the schools, the restaurants that we work with, and they can kind of help us develop what products we do. So our customers help us determine what we make and when we make it and what we'll offer in the future. And one other thing that I'll just share from my experience is that convenience is probably one of the biggest market trends out there right now. People have busy, crazy lives. And so convenience is something that we're always looking to incorporate into our product offerings, whether it be new products in a grab and go size, or whether it be a more convenient way to get our products to people like 
through home delivery. It's just something that we keep in the forefront of everything that we do and all of the decisions we make. There are a lot of businesses out there that have these elaborate marketing strategies and Most of those businesses have teams, departments that all focus on these different things. And I think marketing, especially for farmers, can be very overwhelming, especially if they're used to being out in the fields and and dealing with the dirt and the animals and the, the crops and stuff like that. Marketing is probably the last thing on your mind. And I think it's probably one of the biggest reasons why farmers don't get into selling direct to consumers is just marketing being a scary thing for them to jump into. But I have this very basic view of marketing and I just focus on trying to keep things very simple and building trust with consumers. So we live in a world where you don't know who to trust, what to trust. Things come out on the news and you you have no idea. And so People are struggling right now to really understand what's true and what's not. And so having a relationship with a farmer is such a wonderful tool for our community to have. Really, it's just all about telling our story. So everything I've shared with you, I try to convey in different unique ways to our consumers and to the public. I want to let them know not only what we're doing, but how we got to where we are um, so they can understand things don't just happen overnight. It, it allows them to appreciate the process more. They probably appreciate your products more. And I think all of that's important for, for all of this to work. I also like to educate our buyers and our consumers. Education is such a powerful tool and people are craving the opportunity to know where their food comes from. So that way they're able to trust what is being done. They're able to trust that their food is coming from a good place. They're able to know that the flowers that they're buying are grown with land stewardship in mind. Those are all really important pieces of the puzzle. And that too leads back to, you know, just creating this loyalty among your consumers. I also so talked earlier about the quality of your products and I had somebody come into our store not too long ago and they said milk is milk and I got to thinking about that and for me milk is not milk the things that we do on our farm the way we uh, raise our crops the way we raise our animals how we care for our animals is done in a way that is unlike any other. And each farm has their own story to tell. Each farm has their own way of doing stuff that makes it unique. And how we do our stuff is unique as well. And I truly stand by and believe that the things that we do on the farm side leads to a higher quality, more premium milk that's not like every other milk out there on the market. And I hope that I can convey that to all of our customers by sharing all the little stories as to why we do things, how we do things. I hope that they too see that our milk is not like the other brand on the shelf. One other way that I feel like we keep it simple in our marketing strategy is when we implement new products, we don't try to use some fancy marketing tactic with a a crazy word that nobody's ever heard or anything like that. We really just want to create a product that's made in a simple way. And I think Our minds have been trained over the last few years to think because something looks a certain way, that's the right way it should be done. I think that keeping things simple and just as close to their normal state as possible and then telling people that you're doing that, I think consumers actually really love that and and they're grateful that we're not trying to hide an ingredient under something else and we're just keeping it very, very simple. So convenience has been really critical to growing our business. I wanted to create a space within our creamery, a storefront, if you will, where we could bring in other local goods and really serve our community in a really unique 
way. And so our store is kind of like a little mini farmer's market, except the farmers don't have to spend the time being there at the store. Um, They just bring their product as I order them and then I'll sell it for them. I kind of thought I'm there selling. So how do we work together and celebrate the ag community and help each other out and really give the community something wonderful. And that's kind of what our store does. But partnering with other growers, producers, and farmers in our store is just one of the ways that we work with others in a convenience manner. We also partner with over 30 local companies like restaurants, grocery stores, producers to get our products out there. Again, it's a convenience factor for people going to the grocery store to pick up their milk. So we get them our products there. We deliver to restaurants who are craving local goods to to prepare meals and stuff with. And we deliver to them so that way they don't have to always come to us. And then, you know, I think too, with the farmers, the restaurants and grocery stores that we partner with, we're trying to educate them and let them know of our commitment to quality. And everyone that we work with, they have that same commitment. And so the relationships work really well when we're able to, you know, both have similar uh, visions on what we want in our products. When people come into our store, I always want them to feel like they're welcome and like they're just coming into this place where everybody knows everyone. And and it's just this really sort of comforting space. And I think that it's the same concept that I want to create with our home deliveries. And the word nostalgia comes to mind. And I think anytime anybody thinks of the milkman, they come from a place or they start feeling this uh, nostalgic feeling of the good old days. And and that's what I try to create when I'm talking about our brand, um, when I'm talking about our creamery. The concept of the milkman has been around for a very long time. And truly, it's been a concept that we've wanted to implement in our operation for Oh gosh, ever since we started, really, we're like, how cool would that be to have a milkman that delivers to doorsteps? We really just wanted to make it more convenient for people to get our product. So we sat down and we're like, why aren't people coming to pick up their milk at our store? The number one thing that we kept coming back to is just the convenience thing. We're in a rural part of Iowa, um, about 20 to 30 minutes from a larger community. And people don't want to drive, you know, 20 to 30 minutes once a week or a couple times a week to get their milk. And so we just decided, you know, let's reintroduce the milkman. Let's make it convenient for people to get it. And in return, as we started doing these deliveries, we started getting people to just express their gratitude in a way that, you know, we hadn't seen just with our store. Like they, we were bringing back memories that that people hadn't experienced in so long. We have elderly people ordering from the milkman. We have young families. We have, you know, college students even that are ordering from the milkman. But our milkman brings more than milk. He's more of a modern milkman that delivers ice cream, butter, cheese curds, and then any other products that we carry in our store. So granolas, honeys, jams, it's all local goods that anybody can order from. And it's really just been a really unique thing, essentially a a grocery store on on wheels, if you will. So when we started, uh, we piloted two zip codes just to see. We wanted to just kind of get our feet wet, see how things went. We wanted to make sure we weren't jumping into something that we didn't feel like we could maintain. And in less than a year, we've expanded into 15 zip codes of which are very populated locations. So we've got highly dense routes that we deliver to that have been really, really great. And it's offered another layer to our farm and just a really unique thing that sets us apart from many, many other places. As we were dabbling into home delivery and ironing out the logistics on how to accept orders, how to refund orders, how to do routes, how to load products, how to unload and deliver products. We were sort of trying to juggle all of this and figure out how it was all going to work. Barn to Door made it very simple. I mean, I didn't have to do any work in the middle. I had to populate my products, 
then the orders came in and I didn't really have to worry about anything. And then the day of delivery is when I needed to worry about, okay, loading the truck and getting it to the right people. And once we ironed out our routes and got all of that figured out, we really were able to take it to a, the next level, which is marketing and promoting and letting everybody know in those communities that they have this service that they can use. And one of the biggest ways that we've been able to share the information with others is through our MailChimp account. So I was fortunate that I started a MailChimp account, which is essentially a platform or database that captures emails that I can send e-newsletters out to keep my customers in the loop on what we're doing. I was able to have Barn to Door integrate with my current MailChimp account and send all different kinds of reminders and things that are going on at the farm, at the creamery, and news and updates for home delivery. MailChimp has really, really empowered a new reach for our customers to buy products, to be aware of what we have, and really just to become more familiar with what we have to offer. Over the last six months, I've learned a ton about MailChimp, more than I ever thought I would. I was really just using MailChimp for very simple things like a monthly newsletter, or if we were going to be closed one day for a holiday, I'd send that announcement out to all of our uh, contacts. But since having been trained on a few additional things through Barn to Door, I've really been able to add more value and consistent communication to our marketing strategy. And it's everything from automatic emails that remind people to order this week for their home delivery to specifying exactly what somebody bought last week that they should rebuy it this week because it's a new flavor. We're really able to personalize each campaign to match each buyer's behavior through those targeted emails that in turn get people to raise their eyebrows and say, ooh, I bought that last week. I've got to try this one this week. I think the three main goals that I get out of MailChimp and that I work really hard to achieve is to entertain, educate, and of course, e-commerce. So I want to include something in my marketing that is entertaining, whether it's a picture of a baby calf or, you know, a new ice cream sundae that we have that. It's just really unique. I want everybody who reads our email campaigns to learn something new about us. And then finally, the end goal is we want to make a sale. So it's really important for me that I make the most of every email I send by trying to achieve the three E's. And then the other main goal, of course, is just keeping them up to date. We have new things happening all of the time. And my focus is really just to keep the buyers up to date, keep our customers up to date on the latest and greatest, and then also increase their engagement. So if they haven't been out to the creamery, I want to try to give them a reason to come back. If they haven't ordered from our home delivery service in a while, I want to get them to re-engage with the service and order again. So those are all really important ways that I utilize MailChimp, and it's very, very simple to do. I think we all have goals and visions for the future, and ours are pretty simple. You know, number one is just to create more partners to collaborate with. How do we help other farmers, growers, and producers be successful in their business? We're all in this together. We're all trying to achieve the, the same thing, and if I can help you and you can help me, well, then, you know, let's talk. I want to make sure we're giving our consumers stuff that they want. I want to really try to do that to keep that loyal customer following with us. I would love for more people to experience our milkman. There's more to receiving a delivery than just your products. It's that feel good, you know, moment where you're supporting local. It's really simple and it brings back memories. And I love that. So if we can get more people to utilize this service, then we're thrilled. And then ultimately, our, our plan has always been to just grow what we're doing, not necessarily grow our herd or grow the number of acres that we farm, but really just try to sell all of the milk that we have on our family farm through our different channels. That would be the end goal. 
And if we can do all of that and create a really sustainable way of farming that will live on for generations to come, then I really believe that we've got a successful business. So I just want to say thank you guys so much for listening today. If you have any questions, you can head on over to our website, dananddebbies.com. We also have a Facebook page and we have an Instagram page that you're more than welcome to follow. And, you know, if you ever want to reach out personally, I would be happy to talk to anyone. Thank you so much and have a great day.